Ever wonder why you sometimes feel like you're your own worst enemy? It's a question that stirs our minds, often leaving us puzzled. This silent foe we're referring to is none other than self-sabotage, a subtle yet powerful force that can veer us off the path to success. Imagine self-sabotage as a saboteur residing within us, subtly influencing our actions and decisions. It's like a hidden puppet master, pulling the strings, often leading us to make choices that hinder our growth, limit our potential, and diminish our happiness. It's the reason why we sometimes miss opportunities or why we might choose comfort over challenge. The real kicker is self-sabotage often goes unnoticed. It's like a stealthy ninja slipping under our radar and wreaking havoc in our lives, all while we remain blissfully unaware, but there's hope. The first step towards stopping self-sabotage is recognizing it. And that's what we're here to do. So what causes us to self-sabotage in the first place? This question has puzzled many for ages but the answer is simpler than it seems. Often, the roots of self-sabotage are deeply embedded in our psyche and can be traced back to common factors such as fear of failure, lack of self-esteem, and a comfort in familiarity. Let's start with the fear of failure. It's a crippling fear that keeps us from pushing beyond our comfort zone, from venturing into uncharted waters. Like a daunting shadow, it follows us, whispering in our ear that we're not good enough, that we'll fail. It's the fear that ties our shoelaces together just as we're about to take the first step towards our dreams. Next up is lack of self-esteem. This is a silent saboteur that quietly undermines our efforts. When we don't believe in our own worth, we question our abilities, our decisions, our worthiness of success. We set up barriers and create excuses, effectively sabotaging our own progress. It's like driving a car with the handbrake on. You can push the accelerator all you want, but you won't get far with that brake engaged. Finally, comfort and familiarity. This is a subtle but potent root of self-sabotage. It's human nature to stick with what we know, to stay within the confines of our comfort zones. But too often, our comfort zones become cages, holding us back from exploring new possibilities and reaching our full potential. We become our own jailers, locking ourselves in the prison of the status quo. These common roots of self-sabotage are like weeds that choke our dreams and aspirations. They influence our actions and lead us to sabotage our own success. But the good news is, once we recognize these roots, we can start pulling them out one by one. We can start planting seeds of courage, confidence, and curiosity in their place. Understanding the root causes of self-sabotage allows us to tackle it effectively. It's like shining a torch into the dark corners of our minds, illuminating the shadows where these saboteurs hide. So let's continue this journey of self-discovery and self-improvement together. But how do we know when we're self-sabotaging, you might ask? Well, let's paint a picture with some common examples of self-sabotage behaviors. Imagine you've got a big project due in a week. Instead of breaking it down into manageable tasks and starting early, you find yourself binge-watching the latest season of your favorite show, promising to start on it tomorrow. This, my friends, is a classic case of procrastination, a telltale sign of self-sabotage. Or consider this scenario. You've had a rough day, and instead of dealing with your feelings, you reach for a tub of ice cream or a bottle of wine to numb the discomfort. This is an example of self-medication, another common self-sabotage behavior. And let's not forget about negative self-talk. We've all been there. Those moments when you tell yourself, I'm not good enough, or I'll never be able to do this. This kind of self-deprecating dialogue is not only harmful, but also a clear indicator of self-sabotage. Now I know what you're thinking, but these are just everyday behaviors. We all procrastinate or indulge ourselves now and then, don't we? And you're right, we all do these things from time to time but it's when these behaviors become a pattern, when they start to interfere with our goals and well-being, that they cross into the realm of self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is sneaky. It wears many masks and often flies under the radar, disguised as harmless habits or temporary indulgences. But make no mistake about it, these behaviors can have a profound impact on our lives, holding us back from reaching our full potential. So the next time you find yourself putting off that project, reaching for that comfort food, or indulging in negative self-talk, take a moment to ask yourself, am I sabotaging myself? Recognizing these signs is crucial in putting a stop to self-sabotage. Now that we've recognized the problem, how do we go about fixing it? Well, the first strategy is to set realistic goals. It's easy to sabotage ourselves when we set goals that are too ambitious or vague. Instead, aim for small, achievable goals. Think of it as taking baby steps towards a bigger goal. For example, if you're aiming to write a book, Start by setting a goal to write a page a day. It might not seem like much, but over time, those pages add up. Next, practice self-care. This isn't just about bubble baths and face masks, 
though those can certainly be part of it. Self-care means taking care of your physical, mental, and emotional health. It could be as simple as taking a walk outside, practicing mindfulness, or even just making sure you're getting enough sleep. When we neglect our own well-being, we're more likely to fall into patterns of self-sabotage. Remember, it's okay to ask for help. If you're finding it hard to break the cycle of self-sabotage, consider seeking professional help. Therapists and counselors are trained to help you understand and overcome your self-destructive behaviors. They can provide you with tools and strategies to help you manage your self-sabotage. Lastly, be patient with yourself. Overcoming self-sabotage isn't something that happens overnight. It's a process, and there will be setbacks. But don't let those setbacks discourage you. Instead, see them as opportunities to learn and grow. After all, every step you take, no matter how small, brings you closer to your goal. With these strategies, you're not just fighting self-sabotage, but also building a foundation for a healthier, happier life. You're learning to value yourself, to believe in your abilities, and to take control of your own destiny. With the right tools and mindset, overcoming self-sabotage is entirely within your grasp. Overcoming self-sabotage isn't a one-time event, it's a journey. A journey that's not a straight path, but rather a winding road with peaks and valleys, twists and turns. It's a journey that requires patience, persistence, and a fair amount of resilience. Patience is essential because change doesn't happen overnight. You've spent years, perhaps even decades, cultivating the habits and thought patterns that lead to self-sabotage. You can't expect to undo all that in an instant. It's like turning a ship around in the ocean. It takes time and effort, but with patience, you'll slowly but surely change course. And then there's persistence. Persistence is what keeps you going when the going gets tough. It's what pushes you to keep trying, to keep learning, to keep growing, even when you stumble, especially when you stumble. Because stumbling isn't a sign of failure. It's a sign that you're pushing your boundaries, that you're stepping out of your comfort zone, that you're trying something new. And every time you stumble, you learn something valuable that helps you on your journey. Don't be disheartened by setbacks. They're not a sign of failure, but rather a sign of progress. They're proof that you're challenging yourself, that you're not settling for the status quo, that you're not giving in to self-sabotage. Every setback is an opportunity to learn, to grow, to become stronger and more resilient. And resilience, that's the key. Resilience is what allows you to bounce back from setbacks, to pick yourself up when you stumble, to keep going even when the road ahead seems daunting. It's what turns setbacks into stepping stones, stumbling blocks into building blocks. So be patient with yourself, be persistent in your efforts, learn from your setbacks, build your resilience, and most importantly, celebrate every step you take forward, no matter how small. Because every step forward, every tiny victory, every moment of growth is a victory against self-sabotage. Remember, every step forward, no matter how small, is a victory against self-sabotage. Self-sabotage can be a tricky foe, but it's one you can conquer. We've delved into the depths of this internal adversary, peeling back the layers to understand its roots. We've identified the signs, those subtle hints that we may be our own worst enemy. But most importantly, we've armed ourselves with strategies to overcome this self-inflicted hindrance to our success. Remember, recognition is the first step. Acknowledge that self-sabotage exists, and it's something we all grapple with. Understand its origins. Know that it's often rooted in fear and self-doubt. And finally, apply the strategies we've discussed. Use self-awareness, positive affirmations, and goal setting to gradually chip away at the self-sabotaging habits. We're all on this journey together, and it's a journey of constant growth and self-improvement. Help us reach more people by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Together, we can beat self-sabotage and achieve our full potential.